Have you ever had that horrible feeling that your story just doesn't make sense? The characters are boring, the plot is stupid, the structure is all over the place, and everything just feels broken. As you stare at the blinking cursor on the screen, hoping that the story will somehow fix itself, your motivation to write slowly saps away, and you start to feel like you're a fraud. What business do you have trying to write a book? You should just walk away. You should just give up. There comes a time in every writer's life where you feel like your story is damaged and broken beyond repair, and you just have absolutely no idea how to fix it. I know because that's how I felt when I was starting out as a writer. Broken stories seemed like the norm for me. It always felt like there was this huge gap between the stories I had in my head and the stories that I produced on the page. And it was just so frustrating. Fortunately, as I've progressed as a writer and published more books, I've learned how to shrink this gap and turn my broken stories into successful ones. Because the thing is, while storytelling is this artistic thing, there is also a certain science to constructing a good narrative. And in this video, I'll show you how to use that science to diagnose and fix the problems with your story by identifying your story's emotional core. This is one of the first things I do with my story coaching clients when they come into my story coaching. I basically sit down with them and I try to figure out the emotional core of their book. Quite often when you're struggling to write your next scene or you don't exactly know how to revise your messy first draft, it's because you lack clarity around this emotional core. You don't really know what this story is about and therefore you have no idea how to fix it. But finding this emotional core is the key that unlocks your book. It will help you know what to write next. It will help you know how to edit. It will take away that frustration you're feeling over a broken story and instead transform it into a novel that readers love. So how do you actually find your emotional core? I like to think of it as a series of three steps. And the first is to identify the main character's arc. One of the most common causes of a broken story is that you have an inability to connect with your main character. They just don't feel like a real person. They don't feel three-dimensional, they don't feel fleshed out, they feel fake and hollow. The way you fix this is by getting a clearer understanding of what your character wants and how they will change in the process of pursuing this desire. In concrete terms, you should be able to answer the following questions, which come from K.M. Wyland's Creating Character Arcs book. Number one, what does my character want? Number two, what does my character need? There's a crucial difference there. For example, let's say you have a queen who wants to conquer a rival nation. But what she really needs is to find forgiveness for herself after the death of her only son. The tension between this want and this need will generate the conflict and suspense in your story. The next two questions are, what is the lie my character believes? And then what is the truth my character must come to accept? So in our queen example here, her lie that she believes at the start of the story is that external accomplishment will give me a sense of peace. But the truth she has to learn to accept is that peace can only come from within. A key point here is that your character doesn't actually have to accept the truth. They can choose to reject it, but the important thing is that you as the writer should be aware of this when you're developing and fleshing out this character. And then lastly, question number five, what is your character's ghost? In other words, what past trauma is motivating all of their actions? In the case of our example with the queen, the answer is pretty obvious. The death of the queen's only son is what is providing this ghost, this sort of motivating trauma for her life. And it's the root of her want, her need, her lie, and her truth. So once you've got a better sense of your character's arc by answering those five questions, the next step in clarifying your emotional core is to examine your promise, progress, and payoff. So what am I talking about here? I think Brandon Sanderson has a really good explanation of these three terms. I like to try to view stories as a sequence of promises, progress along that promise and payoff, of which progress is actually the most important of the three for the bulk of the amount of writing you do, but promise is where things go wrong the most often. Now, a lot of the time, if your story is feeling broken, it's because you made improper promises. Maybe your opening chapters were super grim, super dark, but then a couple of chapters into your book, it becomes this really cutesy, lighthearted romance. You have let down the promise that you gave to readers at the start. So with this second step in clarifying your story's emotional core, look at the first quarter of your book. What promises are you making to readers? Do you actually make good on those promises? If the answer is no, then you maybe need to look at either changing the promises you're making in the beginning of your story with the tone, with the kind of scenes that you are beginning the story with, or you need to look at adjusting the progress and payoff later in the story. And then the third and final step in clarifying your story's emotional core is to get clear 
on your theme. Theme is a moral vision that is explored in different ways by the characters in your book. This is not about preaching or trying to ram your beliefs down readers' throats. It's about developing a sense of depth to your story by having the narrative explore a difficult and complicated topic that you are passionately wrestling with in your own mind. As John Truby says in The Anatomy of Story, your moral vision is communicated by how your hero pursues his goal while competing with one or more opponents, and by what your hero learns or fails to learn over the course of his struggle. For example, in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, you might say that the theme is true bravery comes from being willing to sacrifice your life to protect the ones you love. Harry displays this bravery countless times. He's willing to sacrifice his life in the climax to stop Voldemort's return. His mother, Lily, also displays this bravery when she sacrifices herself to save Harry at the very beginning of the story. And then Voldemort, on the other hand, is shown to be evil and cowardly because of his fear of death. Now, of course, when you're looking at other stories like this, there's a lot of room to interpret the theme in different ways. For example, you might also say the theme of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone is that love, courage, and friendship can overcome even the darkest of forces. So theme can be a little bit complicated to understand. And I think if a writer has done their job effectively, different readers will probably come away from a story with maybe slightly different interpretations of the theme. Because again, it's not about being on the nose. It's not about preaching. It's not about characters explicitly saying the theme. It's about giving yourself a guiding principle that helps to enrich and deepen and complicate your story. But I know theme can be complicated to understand, so to flesh us out a little bit further, here are some more examples from some of my favorite fantasy and sci-fi books. The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. True purpose can only be achieved through dedicating yourself to protecting the weak. The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. War and politics corrupt even the noblest of intentions. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Life is absurd and meaningless, but we can find joy and humor in the journey. The key thing here is that your theme should have a conclusive statement about the moral implications of how best to behave in the world. Avoid vagueness. A great example of this is the other day I was talking with one of my story coaching clients about her theme. And she said that the theme of her story was this, the intentions for one's own life clash against others in reality. Despite having different beliefs and intentions for our own lives, we're all interconnected. This was a strong start and it does suggest interesting narrative possibilities, but it lacked a conclusive moral imperative. And that means it's really difficult for characters to reject or accept this theme, which is sort of the entire reason why you want to develop and be aware of your theme in the first place. So we reworked it to say, I also live your dreams without corruption. I think this could be an interesting way to think about it. Um, yeah, that is interesting. Now, again, why do you need to have this really clear understanding of your theme? The way I see it, having a good understanding of your theme gives you this excellent filter. Now you can have some characters who accept the theme or reject the theme or go from rejecting it to accepting it or acceptance to rejection or even force the theme onto other characters in the book. And more than that, you can start to think about what is the best setting or world to explore this theme? What is the most interesting magic system that explores this theme as well? The point here is that your theme is really the backbone of your story's emotional core. It's the unifying principle that holds everything together, that gives a deeper sense of meaning and purpose to your story. And that is essential for guiding you through the difficult process of fixing your book. It's about exploring these difficult moral quandaries in a way that elevates the conflict, deepens the characters, sharpens the plot, and enhances your own passion to write this story. Now, if you're looking for a more advanced guide to take your story to the next level and fix some issues with your manuscript, then you might be interested in my story coaching program. This is where I work personally with you to accelerate your writing career and help you master the craft of storytelling. A lot of my clients actually come into the program with books that maybe are flawed right now, but show a ton of potential. And really the program is designed to help uncover that potential. By applying everything that I've learned from writing three fantasy books and a best-selling video game to help you transform your broken story into a book that readers absolutely love. Apply using the link in the description. And if I think we're a good fit, we're getting a free consulting call to discuss how you can improve your writing. To all of you in pursuit of great stories, keep writing, keep striving. See you next time.